Okay, so in this section, I'm going to make a barista of us both. We'll use the Classic Pro to brew three ways with pods, pre-ground coffee, and then freshly ground espresso. We'll also take a look at how we would dispense water with the hot water arm for trendy drinks, say like the Americano, and then I'll cover milk steaming on the Classic so that you can practice latte art quality milk frothing at home. Let's do it. Let's get started with brewing a pod on the Gaja Classic Pro. So when you are brewing with this machine, you wanna make sure that before you've started, especially when you've switched the machine on in the morning, always have the portafilter locked in. That brass in the head there is going to get nice and hot from being locked into the group. That's all right underneath the boiler, so it's getting pretty toasty. So let's go ahead though and make some pod coffee. Now we'll go ahead and unlock the portafilter from the group and this is the commercial style basket. We want to go ahead though and put in the single commercial basket and I'll show you a little trick to do that. Now if you ever want to remove one of these baskets either to change them or say for cleaning, just get another basket handy. These tabs are great spots for leverage and then simply take the edge of a basket tuck it underneath, and you can use it to pry that right out. So we'll go ahead and take that out. Now, if you um, are worried about getting burned, say for instance, you can always do this with the machine cooled down. Let's go ahead though and put the single basket in. So there is a little spring along the edge here. So just make sure that's in place. Then we'll put our basket in, give it a quick tap, and now we're ready to brew. So we'll take our pod though, and we'll put it in. Now we'll get a cup handy and simply lock in the portafilter and hit brew. So a word on pods. Inside that pod is pre-ground espresso. Now that's not going to be as fresh as something that you'd grind yourself using a grinder. Now, we do have a layer of crema on here, but that also extracted pretty fast. If you're not satisfied with the coffee you're brewing with your pods, you could always try pre-ground. Or, as an alternative, Gaja does sell a pressurized single shot basket that will further slow down the extraction of your pod coffee. That was pods. Now let's take a look at making pre-ground espresso with the Gaja Classic. So we'll go ahead and perform that same procedure again. We'll remove the single shot basket. So we'll simply take our pressurized basket as a little tool there and I'll deftly keep that uh, single basket from falling off the edge of our set here. But what we'll wanna do now is go ahead and insert our two-way pin. And so just to explain a little bit more about what that's doing, if you've ever held your finger, say, over the end of a garden hose to increase pressure and spray, well, there's gonna be pretty intense pressure coming out of the bottom of this basket. So this little pin catches that stream of water and helps it gently flow out of these spouts. So if you ever brew using this basket and the two-way pin is not installed, it can be pretty messy. So we'll go ahead though and tap that in. Now, our scoop that came with the machine, this is a seven gram scoop. We'll go ahead and do two level scoops into this basket, and then we'll go ahead and brew. Now, one other thing that I am gonna do is I will use the included tamper to just gently kind of tamp and polish our surface here. The pressure from the tamp is not as important as just getting a nice level bed for our extraction because the back pressure is really gonna be produced by this basket. So. We'll just go right on ahead and get ourselves a handful of level scoops here. And it's useful to have something nice and straight and flat like a knife maybe. So we'll do one. And two. And so before we actually even compact anything, you can see we've got a couple of little hills in here. So we'll just wanna go ahead and tap the basket to get the coffee distributed pretty evenly. And then we'll just go on and simply even that out into a surface. So let's go ahead, lock that in, and brew a shot using pre-ground coffee.
Now that looks like a shot that I'd really want to drink. As you can see, we have much richer definition on that crema. That is, of course, going to come down to the kinds of coffee that you're using, but we do have more foam in here that is richer. We can do even better than that, though, when we use the true commercial basket. So keep watching for that. But, you know, if I was served this, I'd be pretty happy. For our third act, let's take a look at brewing using freshly ground espresso. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take the pressurized basket and our two-way pin out. Go ahead and use our double here, and we'll pop that right out of the portafilter. So make sure that when you take this two-way pin out, you can see just how small this is. Put it somewhere where it's not going to get lost because uh, I've lost more than a handful of these myself. But we'll get that off and we'll get our commercial basket in. So really now what we're going to be doing is focusing a little bit more on the process for preparing a authentic espresso. Now, this is going to use a grinder that we have in conjunction with the machine. And there are a lot of benefits to preparing your coffee this way. So let's just get started with that. I have our grinder dialed into a setting that will allow me to extract espresso. And this one just so happens to have a timer on it. So it's going to grind me the amount of espresso I need. And then we'll simply continue from there. Now, one of the big things to take note of when you're using a grinder is that you have control over your espresso's fineness, and that's going to affect the flow of your coffee. Now, we want to make sure, too, that we have properly tamped the espresso as well. So I had demoed the included tamper when we were using the pressurized basket, but a good solid tamp is much more important when you're using your Gaja Classics commercial style double basket. So let's go ahead and even out this coffee across the top. You can use your finger for this and just make sure that you've gotten it nice and distributed across the edges of the basket. And then what we'll do is using a higher quality tamper, I recommend something that's 58 millimeters with a flat base. And if you see something, say, that's 58.3 or 58.5, that's going to fit. It's just going to be even tighter to the edge of that basket for a flatter tamp. Now, what we'll do is you want to go in and simply try to press down as evenly and straightly as possible. And we want to push, and we don't want to over tamp, but we want to compress that coffee enough that we have resistance that we are providing to the incoming flow of water. And if you have the tamper level, so parallel to your surface, and you can see that tamper standing straight up, we know that we haven't uh, tamped really to any angles, right? So we want to try to be as flat as possible, and this looks pretty good to me. So we'll take that out. Again, I strongly recommend getting a better quality tamper as part of your initial kit. Now, we'll go ahead and get the portafilter locked in, and just take a look at how this shot compares to the other ones that we've seen so far. So we heard that little bit of water that's being relieved from the group by the three-way solenoid valve. I'll show you our puck once we're done, but look at this in terms of the definition on our crema. We've got some flex there from the different oils and suspended solids in our coffee. We have cascading foam that's going pretty far down this cup. The Classic can truly pull some amazing shots, and this, again, with this uh, basket in particular is going to accept up to about 16 grams of ground coffee. Now, one thing is you do want to try to be consistent with your dosing so that you make sure that you're getting the same amount in there every time. We'll go ahead and set that off to the side. Now, we'll remove our puck and you can see really not much water left on the top of there because it's been relieved out that valve. So, 
An accessory that you can get that we've got here on the left of the Classic is something called a knock box. And what that's used for is simply knocking out this spent puck of coffee into a container that you can then throw away. Personally, I prefer using knock boxes to say knocking this against the trash. It's much more hygienic and it's just a nice little thing to have because it's in such close proximity to the machine. So simply go ahead and knock that against the bar. You may have a little bit of coffee left over in there that you can wipe out using a towel, but it's much easier, say, than if you were going to use something without that valve that's going to leave a soupy mess in the portafilter. And with that, we'll lock that back in. And that's brewing using the commercial basket on the Gaja Classic Pro. Now that we've covered brewing espresso on the Classic Pro, let's take a look at how we would actually froth milk for specialty milk drinks. Now, I've gone ahead and gotten a shot prepped that we had ground freshly for this. Now, this is a cappuccino cup. I do want to mention that because the Classic Pro has relatively limited clearance under these spouts, if you're going to make these milk drinks and want something to fit under there, you may want to invest in some vessels, say, that will fit under there. A traditional American coffee mug is not the ideal mug, say, for making a cappuccino. So we'll go ahead and hit brew. And our shot is getting started. So I'll go ahead, though, and uh, get some of this milk ready to go in our pitcher. This is a 12 ounce frothing pitcher. I would recommend that for the Classic Pro, you'll want to use anything, say, ranging from, let's call it 10 to 12 ounces. And I think our shot is looking pretty good in there. Now, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and switch the machine into steaming mode here. And I will take the shot out from under there. Now, it's important, again, that you have a pitcher that's the appropriate size for the drink that you're making because what's going to happen is we want to get this wand positioned in here so that we can create a roll in the pitcher that is folding the air into the milk and creating that luxurious texture that we want. And you'll find, too, that when you're ready to pour, if you ever think that you have a little bit too much milk in the pitcher, you can always dump some out. Now, this is a commercial-style steam wand, meaning that you'll need to practice just like the baristas at your favorite shops to get a handle on getting the texture that you want. And so we're just waiting for this light to turn on to let us know that the machine is ready to steam. But one thing that we want to do now that our light is on is simply do a quick purge and we can get that water out that had condensed in the line and then simply go in and have your pitcher at an angle Keeping the tip of the wand near the surface of your milk is how we're going to add air. There's a telltale kind of tss, tss, ripping sound like paper being torn that lets you know that you're adding air to that milk. So we'll open the valve. And you want to have the pitcher in such a way that the milk is able to circulate so that that air is incorporated. And we're gonna hold that until it heats up until it's just about too hot to hold, which is around 140 degrees, which is the ideal temperature for that milk. Now, bear in mind that this is not necessarily a milk frothing tutorial, so I may need a little bit of practice too, but we'll wanna go ahead and just wipe some of that milk off and we can more thoroughly clean that wand, but we'll swirl this in the pitcher too. The more air you inject, the airier the milk gets, which is how you can distinguish, say, between a latte and a cappuccino, which requires more foam. But we'll take our drink now with our crema, and we'll go ahead and we'll start pouring. So what's going to happen is the heavier milk, which is more liquid and less foam, is going to go below our crema. It will lift it up. That's how we could go ahead and, say, try to pour some latte art. So we'll go ahead, though, and we will start pouring. And my foam is maybe a little too thick to have poured uh, a really detailed latte art, but you can see the beginnings of a rosetta there. Now, we do want to make sure that we've switched the machine back out of steaming mode so that we can get it cooled down. And then you can evacuate the remaining steam from the wand here, and then you'll be ready to brew espresso again. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at that. 
All right, so now that we're ready to get the machine cooled down, first, let's just go ahead and get our puck knocked out. And you can hear just a little hiss of steam in there because the boiler is still nice and hot. So what I want to do, got our basket cleaned out, is we'll just go right ahead, get the wand over a larger container so we can empty it out. And we'll start running and we'll flip the pump too. And that's gonna start drawing cool water into the boiler to get everything cooled down. And you can start to see water spurting out of the wand instead of that steam. Once we've gotten a solid stream of water, you can go ahead and close that and shut that off. That's how you know now that the steam has been purged from the boiler and we are back to a better temperature for brewing. And so our brew ready light is on. Now with the wand too, you do wanna make sure that you do wipe that down. Make sure you get any of the baked on milk off. So this is going to get hot. This is steel here and the milk can burn on. So the quicker you are to get that cleaned off, the easier it's going to be to maintain this wand. But that's pretty much all you would have to do to get the machine ready to brew again after say you've made a milk drink on the Calasic Pro.